Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we continue with the presentation, the congregation may be seated. We invite you, because of the uptick in the COVID numbers in the area, to remain masked during the service if you have a mask. Please be seated. Have they been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe their manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? Philip, Josiah, Sarah, Keith, and Sarah. Will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? Please stand. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Philip, Josiah, Sarah, Keith, and Sarah for ordination to the sacred order of deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, Come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Philip, Josiah, Sarah, Keith, and Sarah be ordained deacons? It is. 
Will you uphold them in this ministry? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God. We pray to you, Lord Christ, for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord, for all members of your church in their vocation and ministry that they may serve you in a true and godly life. We pray to you, O Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Sam and Anne, our bishops, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth, and may thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. For Philip, Josiah, Sarah, Keith, and Sarah, chosen deacons in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. That they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, Build up your church and glorify your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end, we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. For their families, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues, we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, 
that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. O Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and all our life to Christ our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. He seeks out the wisdom of the ancients and is concerned with prophecies. He preserves the sayings of the famous and penetrates the subtleties of parables. He seeks out the hidden meanings of proverbs and is at home with the obscurities of the parables. He serves among the great and appears before rulers. He travels in foreign lands and learns what is good and evil in the human lot. He sets his heart to rise early to seek the Lord who made him and to petition the Most High. He opens his mouth in prayer and asks pardons for his sins. If the great Lord is willing, he will be filled with the spirit of understanding. He will pour forth words of wisdom of his own and give thanks to the Lord in prayer. The Lord will direct his counsel and knowledge as he meditates on his mysteries. He will show the wisdom of what he has learned and will glory in the law of the Lord's covenant. The word of the Lord.
Lectura de la segunda carta de Pablo a los Corintios. Por eso no nos desanimamos, porque Dios, en su misericordia, nos ha encargado este trabajo. Hemos rechazado proceder a escondidas, como si sintiéramos vergüenza, y no actuamos con astucia ni falseamos el mensaje de Dios. Al contrario, decimos solamente la verdad y de esta manera nos recomendamos a la conciencia de todos delante de Dios. Y si el evangelio que anunciamos está como cubierto por un velo, lo está solamente para los que se pierden. Pues como ellos no creen, el Dios de este mundo los ha hecho ciegos de entendimiento para que no vean la brillante luz del Evangelio del Cristo glorioso, imagen viva de Dios. No nos predicamos a nosotros mismos, sino a Jesucristo como Señor. Nosotros nos declaramos simplemente servidores de ustedes por amor a Jesús. Porque el mismo Dios que mandó que la luz brotara de la oscuridad es el que ha hecho brotar su luz en nuestro corazón para que podamos iluminar a otros, dándoles a conocer la gloria de Dios que brilla en la cara de Jesucristo. Palabra del Señor. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. A dispute arose among the disciples, among the apostles, as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the king of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table, but I am among you as the one who serves? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In these turbulent times, it is a holy privilege to grab onto the moments of joy with both hands and to shout as if our lungs were bellows for great pipe organs and let our shout be Alleluia, Alleluia, and let us celebrate unabashedly. Be witnesses to the peace and love and hope that God calls each of us to. So thank you, Sadie and Sarah, Keith and Josiah and Philip, for saying yes to this call in your life of servanthood and giving us an opportunity to come together and through our worship and prayer, liturgy and hymns, and our work of becoming beloved community, we get to grab on to this moment of transformation in your life, in our lives, and the lives of all whom you have yet to meet in your life of servanthood. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves, like one who serves. Leadership begins with service, not being served, but offering yourself as a servant. And if service is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you. Jesus has set the example for each of us when it comes to leading and serving and living a life of servanthood. From bending down to wash the feet of his disciples, to preaching truth to power, to healing the sick and going to the people on the margins and countless other demonstrations of servanthood found in the Gospels. Jesus has put before us what it, what it means to lead and what it means to serve. These examples translate well into our modern lives and our vocation as clergy, although I'm not sure spitting on the ground to make mud to heal a blind man would go over well in these COVID times. But give it a shot and let me know how that goes. But if we step back from the highlights of Jesus' miracles, we begin to see a bigger picture of the examples Jesus offers each of us about what it means to be a leader and a servant. These examples may not be as bold as his miracles, but they are equally important and actions we can take to enhance our lives as servants, both lay and ordained. Jesus took risks, and Jesus valued all people. Jesus enjoyed moments of joy and rest. Jesus continued to call people beyond their comfort zone, and Jesus took time away. Jesus took time away by himself, and Jesus took time away by himself to pray. After a particularly busy day, feeding 5,000 people, Jesus sent his disciples away on a boat. He sent the crowd home. And then Jesus went up the mountain by himself. As you prepare to take your vows, as you prepare to take your vows and put on the mantle of being a deacon, please remember to follow the example of Christ. To be a servant means to also take time to rest and to pray. And with that, I thought I would take this moment to offer you some other bits of unsolicited advice in terms of being a servant. Earlier this week, I reached out to my Facebook community and I asked this question, clergy folk, when you were first preparing to be ordained, what unsolicited advice given to you actually turned out to be really good stuff. 
I heard from over 30 people who are from various denominations who are clergy and lay and who are also clergy spouses. And they have offered up their collective wisdom for this question. And, and just a word about clergy spouses and partners before we jump into this Facebook feedback session. <laughs> if you are married and partnered or partnered, your ministry in this beautiful and broken world as a member of the clergy, your life of service is significantly enhanced because of the sacrifices your spouse, your partner, and your families make. So never take that for granted. Can I get an amen? Yeah. All right. Clergy life can be amazing and it can also be lonely. As one of the responses given to my Facebook inquiry captures so eloquently, father may be a great guy, but he's never one of the boys. With apologies for the gendered language, the sentiment is the same regardless of your gender identity or expression. But following this thought, another response for your consideration. Gather with charming and ecumenical group of clergy around drinks and a meal and real talk as often as you can. And I will add to that that fresh start or Episcopal start is a great gift and a wise use of your time to fortify you in your new life as a deacon. And when considering the work you are about to take on, some words of wisdom from a lay person about how to do the work that you're called to do. They write, listen to those around you. We don't know exactly what you're going through, but we know you. We called you. We know what you need. We want you to listen to us. We know who you are. Our views may not fit in with what you think you need, but give it time. And in other words, there is a big difference between ministering to and ministering with, and too much to will inhibit a lot of with for both you and the people you serve. You are going to be asked to bless every single meal from this point forward. <laughs> if you're not already a part, you know, doing that, that's not already your responsibility. In fact, guys, you're going to be asked to bless the prayer at the beginning of the meeting, maybe in the middle of the meeting, and perhaps at the end of the meeting. So it's important to have a prayer ready to go, or at least a template. However, heed these words of advice from another response to this Facebook post. I was invited to pray at a gathering. My prayer was something lofty and seminary educated, and I thought it was a prayer. Afterwards, the matriarch of the church tugged on my shirt, and she pointed out that my prayer seemed like I was speaking to God as though God were not in the room. She reminded me that God is always present when we pray. Now, that being said, if you ever want to get out of the duty of being the one who has to bless all the meals, then just pray a long, long, <laughs> long, long blessing and see what happens. <laughs> You five are about to enter into an incredible chapter in your lives, and serving the church in this new capacity is going to stretch you. It's going to frustrate you. It's going to break your heart, and it'll break your heart wide open. You will be blown away by how, when, and through whom the Holy Spirit shows up in the ordinary moments that become extraordinary in the blink of an eye. Remember, please, that Jesus encounters us as one who serves. And sometimes we get to be the hands and feet and heart of Jesus through our serving. So a few tokens of wisdom to share as you prepare to take on your new role. At the end of the day, what makes you a good deacon, a good priest, a good servant, and a good leader is if you answer the phone and you go to the hospital 
and that your people know and trust that you'll do both. Jesus told us to feed the sheep, not to count them. And you must love your people. Love your people. I'll say it again, you must love your people. That fancy new collar you have that you're wearing, it probably took a long time to put on. <laughs> it gets easier. That collar will become a movie screen for many people to project their own experiences with clergy onto. Some folks you encounter do not have a happy history when it comes to organized religion or ordained clergy. Remember this. They might remember the words you say to them, but they will always remember the way you welcome them and the way that you make them feel. Servants are called to, be, to the practice of cultivating relationships. And sometimes we have to hold the weight of the baggage of someone's past as we rebuild trust and heal brokenness and seek reconciliation. The work of the servant is not to take it personal, but to make it prayerful. Though your life as a servant, through your life as a servant, you will be called to be a pastoral presence for people in the highest of joys and the lowest moments of despair. This can take a toll on your spirit, which may in turn take a toll on your health, your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional health, and your physical health. I encourage you to create systems of support around you where you can share the depths of your vulnerability, your struggle, and your worry. As you begin to navigate the waters of your new life as a servant, you will learn that there are places and people where sharing your vulnerability is a healthy and helpful tool of taking on your vows as deacons. Seek out these support systems, including a spiritual director, a therapist, and a clergy coach. I often think that Jesus created a similar system with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And living a life as a servant does not mean we have to hold the weight of the world by ourselves. But creating a system of support helps keep us grounded and balanced and centered and it sets a good example for others to follow. Love your people. Love this journey. And find ways to nourish your spirit through prayer and study, rest, and Sabbath. A long, long time ago, when I was going through the discernment process, one of the Commission on Ministry folks asked the group of aspirants that I was a part of. He asked, so how do you keep holy the Sabbath? Well, my answer was very pious, lots of prayer and study of the scripture and worship and all that good stuff. And everybody else in the group said it except for that one guy, the last guy. He said, do you know how I keep the Sabbath? I sleep in. I get a good workout in. I call my family. I cook myself a good meal and I watch the game. To this day, I wish that had been my answer. <laughs> I wish that had been my answer. And I have to say that my Sabbath now resembles his answer way more than my original answer did. So keep the Sabbath in whatever way makes sense for you. You will need Sabbath to fuel you and refuel you time and time again. The life of service you are being called to will ask much from you but it'll give you so much more in return. And in case you needed one more piece of, of advice that's unsolicited, this is the best advice I got in my last week of seminary from my mentor. And it's called the something else on my calendar trick. You take a rock, you write the word something else, and if something comes up that might interfere with your Sabbath or a special event that you have in your family, 
and you're having a hard time saying no, you just take that and you put it on your calendar and then you can say, I have something else on my calendar. <laughs> I know, right? I've made one of these for each of you, by the way. I have them up here. Sarah, Josiah, Philip, Keith, and Sadie, will you please stand and turn around? When you take a look at this community that's surrounding you, Jesus called 12 disciples and sent them out in pairs of two. This vocation of service ordained ministry is not a vocation to be done alone. You have all these folks here supporting you. They're excited for you, ready to cheer you on. They are ready to serve with you, teach you, form you, grow with you, and help bring about the kingdom of God here on earth, one relationship at a time. My hope and prayer from this day forward is that you will offer your own response to the question, what unsolicited advice turned out to be quite helpful in your ministry? And if any of this that I've said makes it into your list, well then, the web of connection and relationship expands and strengthens, and we move forward sharing in the work together of service and leadership. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith as we join in saying the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servitude directly under your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As deacons in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures, to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. 
You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments. And you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My sisters and brothers, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of a deacon? I believe I am still called. Do you now in the presence of the church commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishops? I will. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures? I will. Will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your household in accordance with the teachings of Christ, so that you may be a wholesome example to all people. Amen. Will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. May the Lord, by his grace, uphold you in the service he lays upon you. O God, most merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, 
who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. We praise you that you have highly exalted him and made him Lord of all, and that through him we know that whoever would be greater must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries of your church and for calling these your servants to the order of deacons. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Philip. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Josiah. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Sarah. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to keep. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Sarah. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make them, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant, to observe the discipline of Christ. Let their life and teachings so reflect your commandments that through them many may come to know you and love you, as your Son came not to be served, but to serve. May these deacons share in Christ's service, and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Philip, receive this Bible as a sign of your authority to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of his holy sacraments. Josiah, receive this Bible as a sign of your authority to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of his holy sacraments. Sarah, receive this Bible as a sign of your authority to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of the Holy Sacraments.
teeth. Receive this Bible as a sign of your authority to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of his holy sacrament. Sarah, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority of your authority to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of the holy sacrament. All who are gathered here in Phillips Chapel at Canterbury School, those who are joining us online, people of the church far and wide, greet the newest deacons, your servant leaders in Christ's beloved community. Your applause was like the sound of a rushing wind. <laughs> My sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also. Read one another with signs of God's peace. Sarah. Peace, Robin. Peace, Keith. Peace, Sadie. Peace, Clark. Jimmy. Can I have one? <laughs> Peace, Phil. Peace, Jimmy. I'm just going to hang out over here. Yeah, yeah. Great. Peace be with you. Please be seated as you're ready for just a few announcements before we continue. Uh, first of all, welcome on behalf of the Diocese of North Carolina to this great service of joyful celebration and welcome to Canterbury School. We are deeply grateful to the people of the school and a couple of shout outs to some particular people that helped set us up for today. And that would be Hunter Salides, who's the chaplain here at Canterbury School and the chaplain of Phillips Chapel, where we are this morning. And also, I want to thank Bryson Carter, who is our videographer, who is making sure that this service gets out through all the channels to the wider church and across our diocese. Thank you both. Um, I have some other thank yous before I say a word about our ordinance. I want to thank Jenny Wilder, our preacher, for an incredibly powerful sermon, for lifting up both the promise and the hope of servant leadership for the 21st century church. And uh, I said to her as she was giving the rocks to the ordinance that I'd like one too. I think we could all use it. <laughs> uh, I also want to thank our organist and choir director, John Cummins, who is here with us from St. Paul's in Winston-Salem. Beautiful job, John, thank you. Um, and our cantor, Clark French, the Reverend Clark French, who is also one of the sponsoring rectors of one of our ordinands. Um, there will be a reception after the service and it's in Barry Hall and you can get there through the back door or you can go through the side door and just walk that way. And uh, I wanna thank Elizabeth Dawkins, my assistant and Patricia Saracen, Bishop Ann's assistant for all their hard work in setting up the reception and for those of the sponsoring parishes who contributed to the reception today. Uh, one word to you ordinands, um, and you're no longer, uh, you, you are now deacons, so I'll stop calling you ordinands. Um, but this is your first opportunity to make good on that invitation to obey your bishop. Um, <laughs> instead of going right to the reception, I want you to stay here and come to the front because we're gonna do some pictures. Um, and anyone else who would like to be part of some family pictures with your respective family member, feel free. Uh, but we are gonna do a group shot after the service before the reception. 
Um, I did want to say a word about our ordinance, and as you know, there are five, so there's not time to say something individual about each one, although I would love to. I have been privileged and blessed to be a part of your journey and to walk with you and to lay my hands on you uh, by the power of the Spirit today. I'm grateful for each of you and for that journey and what it's meant and the twists and turns and what has brought you here today. Uh, a large part of what has brought you here today is the community that is surrounding you with love and prayers and gratitude. Uh, and that includes your family, but it also includes your parish family. And so I do want to single out each of your sponsoring churches. Not that those are the only communities that raised you up, um, but I want to single out your sponsoring congregation, as well as say where you will be serving so that the wider church will know. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to squeeze in one of my own words of advice, because uh, I did see Jenny's post, and I was tempted to put something on Facebook, but I decided the time would be this morning. So, and um, one of the, the uh, words that was spoken to me by my bishop before I was ordained deacon, this was Andrew Wisseman in the Diocese of Western Mass. And he said, Sam, once a deacon, always a deacon. And I say that to you to underscore the heart of Ginny's message, which is servant leadership is at the heart of the mission of the 21st century church. So thank you for being a part of that leadership and a part of that mission. So Philip, you were raised up by St. Luke's Durham and many are here rejoicing with you. And we are blessed that you will continue serving in this diocese at Nativity in Raleigh. Um, and we can applaud after each one. <laughs> Josiah has been nurtured and raised up by St. Peter's in Charlotte. And Josiah will be serving at St. Paul's Chestnut Hill in the Diocese of Pennsylvania. Sarah was lifted up by St. Martin's in Charlotte, and she will be serving at Trinity Houghton, Michigan, in the Diocese of Northern Michigan. <laughs> Keith comes through the care and love of St. Anne's in Winston-Salem, where our preacher is also the rector and he will be serving here in the diocese at Chapel of the Cross in Chapel Hill. And Sadie, also known as Sarah, was lifted up by Holy Family in Chapel Hill, and she will be serving at Christ Church in Kalispell, Montana. I hope I said that correctly. Last but not least, these wonderful deacons will have a discretionary fund to share your gifts of generosity with the needs of the world. And so invite you to give generously during the offertory. There are instructions in the bulletin about how to do that. Uh, and that will be distributed evenly among all their discretionary funds. So please give generously in support of their ministry. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Jacob Pierce who is the other person I want to thank before we continue. Jacob is the chair of our liturgical commission in the diocese and has been the architect of our liturgy. And also, well, I guess the prayer book is technically the architect of the liturgy, but Jacob has given it his own special uh, signature and uh, really thoughtful, prayerful uh, ways of pulling this together. And uh, the bulletin as well is the work of Jacob. And we are so grateful that he's not only done all that prep work, but that he's here and he's our MC and is really keeping us on track in the liturgy. Jacob, thank you. And he will speak about communion. I'll exercise my authority as liturgical officer to ask the new deacons to please make their way into the chancel while I talk about communion. Um, uh, Holy Communion will be offered here in the crossing uh, today on the floor. 
It will be offered in both kinds. Uh, you may come forward. Uh, there will be uh, the bishop and a deacon uh, with bread. A uh, gluten-free Eucharist is also available for those who desire it. Just let uh, the bishop know as you approach, and gluten-free will be just behind him. Uh, there will be uh, four deacons, with each with a chalice on either side. Uh, the first chalice on either side is for drinking directly from the chalice. Uh, the second chalice on either side is for intinction. We just ask that you not intinct uh, from the same chalice people are drinking from and vice versa. Uh, you may uh, receive the bread only. Uh, both kinds is not required to make a full communion. Or if you wish for a blessing instead, just simply approach uh, the bishop with your arms like so. Bishop Sam, I'll let you make an offertory synod. And now walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray and feel free to pray in English, Spanish, or whatever language you choose. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacrament. We pray that Philip, Josiah, Sarah, Keith, and Sadie may be to us effective examples in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with them may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One last word before our final blessing. Bishop Ann could not be with us in person today, but is very much with us in prayer and in spirit. And she was with the new deacons in their pre-ordination retreat on Wednesday. And so she is on our hearts and in our prayers as we celebrate with you the joy of your ordination. And now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.